Today's video is the last in a series examining what HS2 is, where it will serve, and this video, which is simply called Why HS2, will look at the reason we need to build a new railway in the first place. Whilst I'm not certain this will convince all viewers that we need to build HS2, I am hoping that people will have a better understanding about the need for the new line after watching this episode. This mini-series has been heavily influenced by a whole series of YHS2 videos and a Twitter thread by Gareth Dennis, so I thought it only right that Gareth be invited to explain why he thinks it is we need HS2. He certainly does one of the best short explanations to justify the need for a new line. Also, his Rail Natter videos are well worth a watch, so I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. But before that, I just wanted to explain as briefly as possible the original justification for building a new line, which you may be surprised to hear dates back to before 2009, and before the name HS2 was even a consideration. If you watched the first video in this series called What is HS2, you may have noticed that I referred to the new line as a new main line, and not as a new high speed line, and that was quite deliberate, as HS2 is first and foremost about capacity. In fact, the very first study commissioned by Network Rail was intended to examine how best to provide capacity between London, the Midlands and the North, and did not expressly set out to identify if the line should be high speed or not. It was only after the study was completed in 2009 that the idea to build a proposed new line as a high speed line was first mooted, as the improved journey times were seen as a way to improve the business case due to the way that BCR or benefit cost ratio figures are calculated. But not only that, it was identified that improved journey times would bring additional benefits for the regions in the Midlands and the North. The whole justification for the new line was built around the premise that it would free up capacity on the West Coast Main Line, Midland Main Line and East Coast Main Line. However, providing capacity on the West Coast Main Line was seen as the most crucial justification for building a new line. This was due to the fact that passenger figures were increasing rapidly from the start of the 2000s after the upgrade of the West Coast Main Line and the introduction of Class 390 Pendolinos on intercity West Coast services operated at the time by Virgin. This rapid increase in passenger numbers saw journeys double from around 15 million a year at the start of the 2000s to 30 million a year by 2013, topping 50 million per year in 2019, just before the pandemic. Pandemic. And those were just the figures for what was Virgin, now Avanti Services. London Midland, which operated services on the West Coast Main Line from Crewe and Birmingham to Euston, also carried 65 million passengers between 2014 and 2015. So, that was just a brief overview of how HS2 came about. Now I think it's time to hear from Gareth, as he really does explain succinctly why we need HS2. Hello everyone, my name is Gareth Dennis, I'm a railway engineer and writer. Um, I've been asked uh, to talk about HS2, or to explain as succinctly as I can what the point of HS2 is, what the point of a, a new high speed line between the north and the south of um, of England is, what, what, what's the purpose of it. I think I'll, I'll tackle it in three ways, as briefly as I can. The first will be very quickly to, to explain the point of it, the second will be to give you kind of a bit of a logic argument, particularly against like environmentalists who see it as a, perhaps don't see HS2 in its wider context, and the third thing I'll give you all some homework to go and understand what HS2 is. HS2 is about personally. So uh, number one, uh, what's the point of HS2? What's it for? Um, HS2 is is a way to unlock a revolution in suburban and local rail capacity. It's not about the high speed trains. The high speed trains are a useful side effect. But why, why do I say that? What do I mean by that? Well, Britain's railways are a jack of all trades and a master of none. We try and squeeze fast trains that don't stop, slow trains that stop everywhere, regional trains that stop in a few places and freight trains all onto the same pairs of tracks across the country. And we do those through through big bottlenecks, big stations like like places like Birmingham, Crewe, Leeds and Manchester, where we try and squeeze all those types of services through a very narrow bottleneck. What HS2 does is by taking the fast trains, the fast trains, by the way, the ones that in order to allow them to go 125 miles an hour without stopping at all these intermediate stops, you need to leave big gaps in the timetable. So you pull those trains off, put them on HS2, those big gaps in the timetable can close up, you can run many more services. You unlock an enormous lift, a, a huge uplift in capacity on the existing railway network for more local services, regional services, suburban services critically, and of course freight as well. Take those high-speed services, put them on the new lines, and those services also can run to their best. You can run more of those together as well. So it's, it's a kind of a win-win. You're essentially getting, uh, you know, and, and that doesn't, you know, the HS2 doesn't just achieve that for West Coast Main Line. If the Eastern Leg was being built as it should be, as originally planned, um, then you would be achieving that, not for the, East Coast, the West Coast Main Line, but also for the Midland Main Line and the East Coast Main Line. And for all those stations where you're taking those long distance services that sit for ages doing nothing in, in at terminal stations like Birmingham New Street, you know, Piccadilly and Manchester, uh, Leeds, take those and put them in new platforms or parts of expanded stations or new stations, you unlock a lot of bottleneck on those station throats and in the stations themselves that allows many more of the other services that kind of cross, crisscross and use those big stations that aren't on those main lines to also benefit as well. So it's a huge, far-reaching benefit that, that HS2 provides. And it's far cheaper to do it by building a new high-speed line than it would be by spending inordinate billions 
just doing the dedicated work on the existing network, as we saw with the West Coast route modernization upgrade. You know, that, that the project that was going through the, the late 90s and the uh, up to the mid to late 2000s, a decade long project that in today's money cost about 25 billion pounds. And within a year uh, of, 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 of kind of services being the, the full timetable being run, run on that train. Way to you know heavy upgrades of the existing network are not a very efficient way to spend money and use and use skilled people like engineers. So no, that's number one. Uh, number two, um, this is the very very quick logic of why, from an environmental perspective, this project um, washes its face. So we know everyone can agree, all of us can agree that we need to uh, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. And in the UK, transport is currently the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions, and within that, road transport is the largest source. So twenty five percent of the UK's uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions are from road transport. Now, um, the next logic is, well, okay, so we need to tackle transport. How do we do that? Well, the Centre for Alternative Technology, the CCC, um, many others have undertaken plenty of research that has shown that even with an overall reduction in the amount that we move people and things around, we still need to have at least a 50 to 100% modal shift from road to rail. Likewise, from air to rail, but that doesn't represent quite the large numbers. It's the road to rail shift that represents the big numbers, and that requires suburban capacity, not not necessarily long distance capacity. Although it does also require long distance capacity, it requires overall a, a, between a fifty and one hundred percent uplift in rail capacity. So by the time you get through that, so do we want to um, reduce greenhouse gas, gas emissions? Yes, that means we have to reduce. We, we we need to reduce transport emissions. Yes, that requires a mode shift towards rail. Yes, at that point you go right. Well, what's the most efficient way to deliver that? And the rail industry is pretty much unanimous in agreement that the best way to deliver that is through high-speed segregation, through projects like High Speed 2 and the new high-speed line between um, uh, Liverpool, uh, Manchester, Bradford, Leeds uh, and beyond um, that's currently also not being delivered. So, so that's the quickest way to deliver it. So that's the, that's the logic. Reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We need to mode shift um, uh, from road to rail, which means we need more rail capacity, which means that we need HS2. You know, that's, that, that, that's an unassailable logic. And the last bit is the homework. So go find your nearest uh, station, your nearest local station that's on a, uh, on, a, on, a, on a mainline railway, like the West Coast mainline or the East Coast mainline. Count how many trains at rush hour go through without stopping. If you're on the West Coast mainline, those numbers will be large. All those trains could be stopping local services and more if those fast trains were moved on to HS2. So that was, uh, that was me waffling away, but hopefully, uh, hopefully some interesting stuff in there. Um, uh, you can catch me uh, every Wednesday evening on, uh, on Rail Matter um, on, my, on my YouTube channel. And also I'm very loud on Twitter. Um, Cheerio. So that's why we need HS2. I'd just like to say a big thanks to Gareth for providing the clip as I don't think I could have explained it better myself. However, I would like to just add that the main points to take away from this video are that by removing fast non-stop trains from the West Coast Mainline, HS2 can improve local and regional connectivity on the West Coast Mainline by providing space to allow more trains to stop at places like Rugby and Milton Keynes. And if HS2 were to be built in full to Leeds as originally intended, it would also have the same positive impact on both the Midland Mainline and East Coast Main Line. In addition to doubling capacity on intercity services from the Midlands and the North to London, HS2 would also free up space for freight on existing lines, helping to remove thousands of HGVs from UK roads, and as an added bonus, slashes the journey time from stations in the Midlands and the North to London. And once HS2 Phase 2B is complete, we'll half the journey time from Manchester to Birmingham. There we are, that's why HS2. I'm hopeful that this may have changed the minds of some who are sceptical about HS2, but if not, at least provide a better understanding about the justification for the new line. In any event, I hope you found this video informative, and if you have, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. It really does help the channel get noticed, and don't forget to check out Gareth's channel with a link to that in the description. But I'm going to leave it there for today, and say until next time, bye bye.